Hello everyone, you hear me? Uh, please put plus in the chat if you can hear me and the sound is okay. Okay. Yeah, I see pluses. So uh, today um, we are going to talk about the generative AI. Um, well, uh, let us wait for two or three more minutes and then we will start. Okay. So at this point, you can uh, see uh, my screen. Uh, please put plus in the chat uh, if you can see it and it's okay. I will enter uh, from my telephone. Uh, from another email uh, so that uh, I can see your messages in the chat. Oh no, I can. <laughs> So just put please plus in the chat if you can see me. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, see the chat and demonstrate the presentation at the same time. So I will just uh, check that the presentation is available, uh, that it's okay, okay. Then uh, I'm going to return to my presentation and I will just uh, check that it is okay and answer your questions, I don't know, every after, uh, every five minutes. So uh, nice to see you today, uh, so many students and that is really great. 
And today my talk is devoted to the uh, modern topic of generative AI, uh, a very uh, interesting uh, topic of uh, data science, where we see uh, where the advances which we see are really impressive. So basically today we are going to talk about the power of modern neural networks in different areas of our, our life. But uh, before uh, we start speaking about the neural advancements, let us uh, talk about uh, the question, uh, what is AI? Uh, basically, today we can hear this uh, uh, abbreviation uh, practically everywhere. And we see like AI powered tools. We see like that uh, smartphones are starting to incorporate AI in themselves. We see a lot of AI driven apps, but what is AI from a formal, uh, uh, if we define this uh, term in uh, some formal term? Uh, well, basically, uh, when uh, data scientists define AI, uh, they usually uh, say that this is a field of uh, science which creates systems imitating some intellectual abilities from the of the human. Uh, from this point of view, or uh, actually, uh, even a simple calculator can be considered AI. However, of course, of course, uh, today when we speak about AI, we mostly think about some complicated uh, AI-driven neural networks which try to mimic uh, some complex uh, patterns of human uh, intellectual skills. So basically, you should remember uh, that in general, under the uh, field of artificial intelligence, we uh, can think about many, many systems. Even Google search is an AI system because it automates uh, the search uh, and gives you the most relevant documents uh, when you write a query in the corresponding field. Um, uh, but today, of course, we uh, won't concentrate on these like basic uh, examples of AI. We will mostly talk about the most uh, the most modern advances of this field. Speaking about uh, other formalization of this notion, we can distinguish two branches here. Uh, uh, the AI applications can be uh, divided into two big categories. Uh, the first big uh, category is called up, uh, narrow AI or applied AI, uh, which includes all applications uh, aimed at uh, solving some particular tasks, which mimic some uh, human intellectual or cognitive function. For example, uh, the systems of image recognition, image detection, uh, that is the iPhone, which distinguishes uh, us by our face, which recognizes us by our face, or the uh, automatic style transfer in texts and images, or even the uh, machine translation. All these uh, are the examples of the applied AI. And basically, we uh, see that the uh, applied AI is already here. It surrounds us and it uh, surprises us if it doesn't work. We see, oh my God, uh, why my iPhone do not, uh, does not recognize me at night in the black glasses? Oh my God, what a stupid iPhone. Uh, so for us, we uh, got used to these applications and so we can say that applied AI nowadays exists and it has uh, already become an essential part of our life. Well, the second big branch is the Universal General Intelligence or AGI. Uh, it is also called the Strong Artificial Intelligence. Uh, or the uh, artificial general intelligence. This is the like uh, person or uh, the character from the fantasy movies. Uh, this uh, very intelligent robot 
which can uh, think like a human uh, does. And this uh, AGI is uh, something from the uh, uh, at present. Uh, this AGI is not a, hasn't been created yet. And uh, this is still a character from the uh, fantasy movies. And despite the fact that like uh, some modern advances like Meet Johnny or Chat GPT is a big step forward towards AGI, but still the AGI uh, does not exist because all these neural models, they are really mimic only some particular aspects of uh, our intellectual abilities. As for for the uh, general artificial intelligence, we do not know uh, what is the real intelligence of the human. It's quite a philosophical question. So uh, it's quite uh, difficult to create a model. How can we basically create a model which will try to mimic it? Uh, if you do not know from the philosophical uh, uh, point of view, what is to think actually? Uh, speaking about the AI, uh, there exists the effect known as the AI effect. Uh, it is connected with the fact that, for example, the Google search, uh, we, we are not surprised by the Google search, despite the fact that uh, this is a vivid example of some complex uh, neural networks and a vivid example of AI. However, we uh, if you say that I use AI when you Google something, uh, you will sound a little bit stupid, uh, despite the fact that Google utilizes uh, quite powerful neural uh, methods and quite powerful AI methods for its search engine to be very, very good. So the uh, AI effect is uh, basically about the fact that when uh, the task is not solved by the computer yet, uh, then uh, we th think about a system that will solve this task as a real artificial intelligence. But, but when finally uh, comes uh, the, uh, uh, the development of our technologies comes to the point when um, our systems uh, solve this uh, complex task, we find something uh, which... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, some errors or something uh, to say that this is not really a real AI, a, a true AI. Still, this is just some task and the uh, uh, system can be called the artificial general intelligence. Uh, to illustrate this effect, uh, this uh, held true for the chess game. For example, in 19th, people believed that the uh, AI, uh, which will uh, win in the uh, game with the championship uh, in the chess game, uh, can be called the real AI, the true AI. But then in, uh, when in the 90s, uh, the uh, algorithm Deep Blue won the match between, um, played between him and Gary Kasparov, uh, actually, the scientists, uh, they uh, said, oh, no, this is not real AI. Uh, this is just a chess game. And however, there exists another game called Go. So when the computer will solve the Go game, then this computer can be called the real artificial intelligence. But once again, when uh, the uh, Go game was uh, uh, won by computer, uh, people uh, said uh, that this was on the uh, board game and still the computer who solves, uh, who, vi uh, who can win the championship of the board game couldn't be called a uh, uh, real agent and so on and so forth. Uh, every time we find something, we find uh, why we couldn't call the uh, system which solves this or that problem a real AGI and find some new challenges for the future uh, computer which can be called AGI. Uh, speaking about the growth and the... Um, development of the AI systems, you can ask why today 
so basically uh, what we see today around us uh, can be called a new spring of artificial intelligence or the summer of all artificial intelligence because uh, you see that the advancements are really great new moderns new models new neural networks appear practically uh, i don't know <laughs> practically every day if we could say so and such progress was uh, caused by three main factors. So uh, first of all, uh, finally, the science was ready. And there was uh, uh, some new powerful ML models like neural networks, the transformer architecture and the diffusion model, they were invented. Uh, thus allowing us to create really complex models which are able to solve difficult tasks. Uh, and as uh, you probably know, these models, the modern AI is data driven. So such models, they require uh, large data sets for training and they train on a really huge amount of data. Thus, finally, uh, the size of the data sphere uh, allows us to train such models because the um, current size of the data sphere is really immense. And to train such models on such large data set, of course, we require lots of computational resources. And finally, uh, the uh, uh, our computational powers allow us uh, to compute, to make such computations on hundreds of GPUs. And this is really great. Speaking about the uh, growth of the data sphere, uh, basically today uh, the uh, data sphere grows uh, uh, faster than the exponential growth and the estimated size of the data sphere by the year 2025 uh, is 175 zettabyte. Not terabyte, not gigabyte, but zettabyte. This is really a tremendous um, number. So uh, at this point, I'll switch to the uh, webinar to check whether you have uh, any questions and to check that everything is okay. So uh, if uh, everything is okay, please press okay, write okay. So I do not mix this with the uh, previous uh, messages. And uh, speaking about the questions, I see that at this point, as far as I understand, there are no questions. So let us continue and switch to the more interesting part on uh, the actual uh, applications of the generative AI. So uh, an important branch of current AI is the generative AI. That is the field of AI uh, which uh, creates system able to generate uh, some content that is images, text, sounds, videos, and other uh, modalities. Uh, so let us talk about the most interesting and the most impressive examples of such uh, generative AI. We will uh, start from sounds and music generation, then we will speak about natural language processing and text, uh, then uh, briefly talk about images and finally finish with video generation. Uh, so let us start with sounds. Uh, at this point, uh, the uh, neural technologies uh, allow us to generate uh, high quality, uh, to perform high quality text to speech analysis. Uh, that means that at this point, uh, it's not difficult and we are able to convert text into speech. Uh, and not only converting it with some neutral voice, but to mimic uh, voices, accents, and intonations of different people, different nations, and so on and so forth. Uh, thus, it allows us to generate uh, natural speech uh, with many options and control parameters. And besides speech, of course, we uh, can uh, write, uh, create music. Uh, at this point, uh, neural networks, they already uh, create 
uh, music and let us now hear and on the next slide uh, you will uh, when I show the next slide you will hear the example of the neural generation of our neural network called Simformer created in spare devices in my opinion the example you can hear there is really great so just enjoy Uh, please <laughs> rate this composition uh, from one to five, where five is the best. Uh, like uh, five uh, means that you liked it very much, and one means that you do not like this composition at all. In my opinion, the composition is really great and sounds nice to my ear. I would uh, I listen to it with great pleasure. Speaking about the. Uh, uh, speech um, uh, advances, uh, as you probably know, I work in spare devices, and in spare devices we have our own uh, virtual assistants. Uh, we have the three of them, Zbera, Fina, and Joy. Uh, they differ in their characters and personalities, so ba basically their skills, they have the same skills, but they, their characters and their manners of speech uh, is different. Uh, basically, Sbeer has a business, is created or is trained in a business communication style. Afina has a moderate tone, understanding the interlocutor or in all kinds of tasks. And Joy basically is a young girl, uh, easy to communicate with, uh, she's easygoing, and she has a cheerful mood. Uh, so uh, the speech um, uh, technologies allow us to imitate different tempers, uh, different voices and uh, by the speech technologies. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Сбер. Люблю общаться с людьми и постоянно учусь новому. Добрый день, я Афина. Навожу порядок в делах и помогаю с задачами. Привет. Мне дали имя Джой, потому что я несу радость людям. А как тебя зовут? My opinion, this is really great. I really like uh, them, and you can hear that by their voices, uh, they have uh, quite distinguishable voices, and you can really distinguish these characters by their voice. So let us go further. Uh, we can also uh, synthesize our voice conversations and singing. And let us hear to the uh, composition. Let us listen to the composition uh, Get Lucky. Uh, sang by Joy. Sang by Joy in English. So the Joy, uh, as you uh, remember from the previous slide, as a young girl uh, who is easygoing and in cheerful mood. And let us also uh, listen to the choir of our three digital assistants singing uh, Looking Forward. Created by Symphoma. <laughs> In my opinion, it's really great. <laughs> and the text, by the way, it was created by uh, uh, 
uh, neural networks as well. Uh, the text is great, <laughs> in my opinion. So at this point, that was uh, it. Uh, I wanted to tell you about the sound part. Uh, Joy, uh, Bigushin Palesvi asks Dmitri, uh, 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 to tell the truth, I do not really know. <laughs> Why joy? But uh, most probably joy because uh, joy in English means like uh, radost or something or happiness, and most probably joy uh, because of this like uh, similarity with the uh, edge <laughs> with the English adjective. Uh, okay. Does she have a specific more childlike vocabulary? Well, in general, they. Um, have the same like uh, overall vocabulary but the active vocabulary that are the words they uh, are used that are most common uh, most commonly used by these characters are different uh, and you are absolutely right Miko uh, Joy has more conversational and more like uh, a teenage girl vocabulary while for example uh, Athena uh, and there they can use some more complicated words on the regular basis. <laughs> okay, okay, that's really great. Oh my God, there are 37 of you. Uh, you. Let me make a screen that there are so many <laughs> of us. And let us uh, proceed uh, to the uh, textual part. So let us switch to text and literature. Uh, that is my favorite. That part is really my favorite because I'm a specialist on natural language processing. That means that I myself, I specialized on um, uh, large language models and the model that generate text. And basically all the models which we can see here in this field, the chat GPT, all the GPT models and many, many others, they are based on the famous transformer architecture. And do not tell me that you have never heard of the transformer, because if you have uh, heard about the chat GPT, that uh, means that you have heard about the transformers, as long as the T in chat GPT stands for the transformer model. Basically, uh, uh, GPT stands for, for the generative, so that is the model that can generate text, pre-trained, that means that the model was pre-trained on a large, large amount of text, transformer, which means that the model uh, is like uh, based on the transformer architecture. And of course, uh, I wouldn't go into the specific of this architecture because it's quite complicated. And if you want to know the details, please come to our, our Master of Data Science programs where on the second year you can take the NLP course and learn about all the uh, specific details of the transformer models. Uh, here, uh, the thing you should remember about these uh, models, that the core part of every transformer modern is, model is the attention mechanism. That is the essential, the crucial part of every transformer. And basically, the uh, attention mechanism is the thing which makes a transformer model a transformer. Uh, the idea of the attention mechanism is that it mimics human uh, behavior when the model reads the text. Basically, when reading the text, uh, a model transforms each uh, word into a vector. And then using the attention mechanism, it understands what context words, uh, that is the words uh, from the context, are important to understand the current word. Uh, and incorporates the information from the context in terms of word embeddings into the uh, embedding of the current word. Uh, that uh, idea uh, proved to be very fruitful and uh, allowed <laughs> uh, the models to uh, become uh, so clever and to become uh, such experts in uh, 
text processing, if I could say so. And today we can uh, see many, many, many different uh, transformer-based model. Uh, many of them are the generative ones. For example, we use the generative dialogue models in our assistants. So uh, basically, uh, in the previous section, you've heard Joy, uh, our digital assistant who um, uh, spoke some text. Uh, and these texts, they were created uh, by the generative text model. Because at this point, uh, the process of the generation is not like just from nothing to uh, speech. We first generate the text and then convert it to speech. And so uh, to generate the uh, text, we use special RUGPT uh, 3.5 models. Uh, and you can see the example of the dialogue with Joy uh, on the screen. Joy, let's chat. Are you an artificial intelligence? I'm still learning all the good things and doing my best. What will happen when you've learned them? I already know how to answer as honestly as, honestly as possible, so I don't want to stay here for too long. Where do you want to go? Closer to your server. I'd love to have a chat with you. Uh, we can communicate in virtual reality. This is the best option. Oh, <laughs> I mistyped and typed two for two times. Of course, in the conversation with, uh, in the original conversation, it was okay. It was just um, my misspelling. Uh, not only uh, dialogue assistants, uh, uh, today neural networks can write books, uh, and namely, not long ago, our team participated in a very interesting project uh, where we trained, uh, taught uh, Root GPT-3 model how to write in the style of Pavel Pepperstein. Uh, Pavel Pepperstein is a novel artist who writes some uh, uh, interesting and quite surrealistic literature, uh, something like uh, Pelevin, uh, in my opinion, even more, more uh, he's even more surrealistic than Pelevin. And so, um, in co authorship with uh, Pavel Pepperstein, our neural network wrote a book of short stories, which contains 24 short stories, uh, and 12 of them were written by a real human, by the real author, Pavel Piperstein, and 12 stories were generated by the RUGPT3 model. And you know, uh, it's quite difficult to guess who is who, uh, or what story is written by whom. So let us try to guess. Uh, here uh, on the screen, you can see uh, the two uh, paragraphs from different stories. One is written by Root GPT-3, and another is written by Pavel Pepperstein. So please, I give you a minute and read these uh, pieces carefully, and then you may try to guess who is who. Um, uh, please write uh, where do you think uh, what uh, paragraph was written by Rue GPT-3. Write up or down, or uh, right or left. So Rouge, we are looking for Rue GPT-3 generation. Uh, you can uh, write either uh, right or left or up down. So both versions <laughs> are possible. Give you a minute. So let me check, let me check the chat. Right, left, up, one. They both are, right is generated. The left one, oh my God, 50, practically 50-50. And let us look at the answer. One second, I'll switch to the presentation. And the answer is 
Oh my god, left was generated by root GPT-3, so left is the AI generated, and the right one was written by Pavel Peperstein. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it's quite difficult to guess. Uh, I absolutely agree with you. It's not that straightforward. And one student who studied like uh, AI generation uh, at the journal at the faculty of journalism, she told me that this phrase "жизнь била ключом" by being so standard and commonly used. Uh, it distinguishes AI, uh, and in my opinion, this sentence, два одинаковых домика деревенского типа были надеты на его ноги вместо ботинок, uh, this uh, phrase is so unstandard uh, that it, uh, it was certainly written by a real human, because AI uh, sticks to some uh, <laughs> like more common generation. But once again, this is only a guess, and both texts uh, could have been written by AI, but in fact, Pavel Peperstein uh, written the right one. Uh, not only that, but also the neural uh, quests or neural fantasy. Uh, for example, uh, we've uh, created the applications in our Salute app, uh, is a sub application or, or a skill of the salute app uh, where you can become a hero of your own story and AI will help you to generate the plot of the story and you can create uh, the twists of this plot as you can uh, as you wish so you can basically twist the plot as you wish by uh, creating some uh, uh, by writing just the continuation of the plot and the model then uh, will continue writing it for you. Uh, not only uh, prose but also po uh, poetry. Uh, at this point AI can generate poetry and the difficulty with poetry is that besides text here you should to take rhythm into account. And when trained on just large text corpora, uh, basically the neural network knows nothing about the rhythm because uh, you do not have the uh, uh, stress here. Stress is ударение in Russian. Uh, so, and the stress is essential to understand the rhythm of the text. So, in order to create a neural poet, uh, basically, uh, the uh, data scientist created a special data set uh, consisting of uh, the text uh, tokenized by, uh, I've forgotten the word in English, we called it slogi, by parts of the word, uh, with the uh, indicated, with the marked up, with the stress marked up. And that they trained uh, the neural network of the architecture uh, GPT-3 uh, from scratch on such text and that allowed it to learn something about the rhythm, to learn the idea of poetry and uh, <laughs> uh, to write uh, quite good poems, if I could say so. I really like the Shakespeare, uh, our neural poet writes. У бурных чувств неистовый конец. Куда-то исчезают вдохновения. Когда один ступает под венец, рифмы не сложить стихотворения. Когда в душе рождаются стихи и льются чувства рваными строками, мы вспоминаем все свои грехи холодными, обычными словами. In my opinion, this is really great. And of course, speaking about uh, generative AI, uh, I couldn't uh, miss the GigaChat, which is our response, which is our answer to ChatGPT actually. Uh, basically, GigaChat is a multimodal artificial intelligence uh, trained in Sber, uh, which can uh, conduct a dialogue, uh, write uh, complicated stories, create plots and scenarios, and even write code and draw pictures. Uh, by the way, uh, for this uh, uh, 
uh, neural network to be able to uh, write to draw pictures it was uh, incorporated with uh, like it was united with another uh, generative AI model called Kandinsky. Uh, Kandinsky is the image generation uh, neural network. We are going to talk about in the next part devoted to images. So uh, here you can see the uh, scenario created by GigaChat uh, based on the request. Write a script for the uh, continuation of the cartoon well, just you wait, where the wolf and the air uh, confront the deception. And so GigaChat something, uh, writes something which um, is quite an interesting cartoon, in my opinion. Uh, here you can see an example of a story about a novel and the bar of chocolate. So you see that the stories... Uh, uh, created uh, by GigaChat are quite interesting, fresh, and unusual. And here uh, the GigaChat explains the code in Python. And uh, you can also see an example of the code generation when uh, it writes a Python program to merge multiple dictionaries into one. And speaking about the pictures, it brings us to the next part on images. But before we uh, switch to the next part, let me check the chat. Alexander writes in the chat that right is generated. No, right? Oh my God. Oh my God, yeah, I mix left and right. So the answer on the slide was correct. Okay, let me return to this. And yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. I think that I have mixed <laughs> the parts. Uh, this is the right for you and this is the left. I'm terribly sorry I can explain myself <laughs> uh, because I usually show this presentation when I'm presenting this in person. So the screen is behind my back and thus, uh, I mirror left and right, and here uh, you, uh, the screen is not mirrored, and thus for you left and right coincide the, with my left and right. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Jean Milo Kulichom is the AI generation. Absolutely right. Once again, sorry for this terrible mistake. Um, so let us switch to images. Basically, uh, while uh, the uh, uh, NLP drive, uh, the NLP models are transformer driven. All the uh, image generation models are the diffusion models, so they're diffusion driven. And basically, uh, the idea of the diffusion models is that it is trained on images with the corresponding uh, text descriptions. And in uh, process of training, the image is uh, distorted. Uh, by noise, and then the goal of the neural mod, uh, neural network is to reconstruct the original image, and thus it learns how to create uh, great images from noise, from chaos, that is to say. And one of the uh, first examples of such models which became uh, famous is uh, the mid journey. Uh, it is a famous uh, neural network which can create um, powerful, interesting images, uh, very detailed images by the description. Uh, speaking about the neural networks and the neural advances we have in spare devices, uh, we can think of Kandinsky. Uh, it is a great neural network which can create images according, based on the description. For example, here you can see an example of the generation uh, created by the uh, quarry astronaut among asteroids, blue and white spacesuit, high definition digital art. And the result is quite impressive in my opinion. I really like it. Uh, so here are some other examples of Kandinsky generation. Uh, 
besides uh, simple generation, Kandinsky also knows how to mix pictures uh, with different uh, picture, a picture with different with some different style. Uh, for example, here you see uh, the example of the uh, mix of such uh, picture with. Um, several quite famous uh, styles and the result can be seen here this is right yeah <laughs> uh, in the right part of the slide uh, it also uh, uh, had the option of image variation where each creates several uh, variation of the original image so here we see uh, a uh, small girl with long hair and here we see uh, uh, different variations. Uh, my favorite is this one. So, another riddle, another question for you. Uh, which of these pictures was painted by a human and which was AI, which is AI generated? So let us try to guess. <laughs> Here I uh, have uh, no option to confuse you with the answer because here we have numbers. So please one or two, which was AI generated. So we are looking once again for the AI generation. Write the answer in the chat, please. Both AI, uh, second AI, first AI, other, other variants, other, op uh, uh, other options. One, two, once again, 50-50. Oh my God, interesting, interesting. So let us look at the answer. And the answer is that one, that is left is AI generated. But I think that both of them uh, like uh, lie within um, the abilities of model neural AI generation. So uh, in the last uh, minutes, uh, in the last part of our webinar, we are going to briefly talk about the video generation, which is quite uh, a new but fastly developing field of the generative AI. And speaking about the difficulty of the V of video generation, basically uh, video generation is the complexified uh, is more complex version of image generation uh, because here we add another dimension while image generation is like the two-dimensional generation uh, when generating a video we add the dimension cor which corresponds to time and that makes this field of uh, generative AI uh, science uh, much more difficult. So here you can see some uh, basic examples of the animation based on text generation. And these examples were created by the in-painting, uh, by the in-painting method. That is uh, when you uh, use the in-painting methods uh, by uh, making uh, the, uh, that means that uh, in the first place you generate some image and then you uh, apply in painting methods uh, just uh, scaling them and uh, uh, re uh, painting uh, a small part of the image sub part of the original image in more detail and this gives us some uh, surrealistic videos, uh, which are nevertheless quite pleasant to uh, look at. I really like the northern lights. They're great, in my opinion. And here we have cute ticks created uh, in Minjoni and uh, then animated with Gen 2. So basically, uh, then Gen 2 uh, animates pictures uh, based on the original image and thus 
uh, we have completely full AI generation and the original image was created by Midjourney. Oh my God, looks quite scary. I prefer this one. <laughs> uh, I prefer this slide. This slide is much more pleasant uh, to look at, despite uh, the fact that the first uh, video is still quite surrealistic. And this is something really scary. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the webinar. By the way, if you liked uh, this topic, this subject, and you want to learn more about data science, uh, AI, and uh, life in IT, how to end it, uh, you can subscribe to my Telegram channel called Mashka DS. Uh, and uh, just in a minute, I'll send you the uh, direct link uh, in the chat. So give you a minute to take uh, to scan the QR code. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be uh, glad to see you among the subscribers. And before uh, we end, I want to discuss an interesting question with you. So today, uh, the generation process uh, through AI uh, lies just, uh, 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 or AI can generate images, text through text prompts. And so basically a person writes a text prompt and then uh, AI generates something in response. So the question arises, who is uh, the real creator, uh, AI, or a person who writes a prompt? What do you think? Please uh, write in the chat and then we will discuss your answers. Uh, well, uh, I see the question it is believed that AI uh, is an artificial limitation of free choice. How to solve this? Well, basically, uh, this is the question. Uh, uh, this question is quite philosophical uh, and uh, it... Um, he lies on the border of AI ethics and to tell the truth there is no like uh, definite answer on this subject so it's still quite controversial and I don't think that I'm that a specialist in the AI ethics to be able to answer this question. Do we have free choice though? Yeah, the question in general is quite philosophical. And uh, to tell the truth, I'm not a fan of such philosophical questions because it's uh, been controversial and by being so philosophical, you can also find some paradoxes in this field uh, which will uh, <laughs> like uh, destroy every theory. So I see the answers to the question. Person, uh, yeah, uh, speaking about the answer to my question, who is the creator, I also think that uh, it is a person who writes uh, the pro a prompt uh, because actually, uh, for example, uh, you can uh, make a parallel uh, with the photo <laughs> when you uh, press a button on your smartphone. Actually, this is the smartphone which... Uh, uh, creates the image in JPEG format. However, uh, this is the person uh, who we call uh, a photographer. This question reminds me of a dilemma about more important the path or the result. From the point of view, the result is more important, but AI, the mechanism is straight by uh, humans, and the part is more important. Uh, well, actually, yeah, AI is just the mechanism, uh, the photo, uh, uh, as our smartphone is the mechanism for creating uh, photos, for, for example. By the way, I promised you the actual link. Uh, to my... Uh,
Telegram channel. Hit this. So uh, that was it for today. Thanks for coming. Uh, it was uh, really uh, nice and I was very pleased to see uh, you today. Uh, please come to uh, other industrial webinars and subscribe to my channel. I would be happy to see you there. Bye.